Hi, welcome back to the channel. So it's been a little while since I've done a writer's tool, but today I thought I'd get back into it with BookBrush. Uh, some of you may already know what BookBrush is, but for those who don't, uh, essentially it's a tool that helps writers advertise through graphics. Um, we'll just take a quick look at the splash page here uh, and some of the things that it offers. And um, what I wanted to do, instead of focusing strictly on just book brushes i also wanted to look at an alternative site for you guys because um there's some interesting ways in which you can uh, use all of these resources to your marketing advantage uh, so stay tuned to the end of the video um, it's not going to be just about book brush all the book brush will be the main focus uh, but i wanted to give you guys some perspective on other ways to uh, handle book promotion so let's go ahead and take a quick look um, just a point of reference i picked up a book brush um, paid membership about a month ago because I was um, I uh, joined this um, online conference called InkersCon which I was actually going to do a video on a while back but it just it didn't come out that well so I didn't post it but I may redo it later um, so I, wanted, I do like to talk about writers conferences at some point but uh, one of the the offers I got uh, by being an attendee was I got a, a really steep discount on book brush so I went ahead and, and used it so that's one reason why I have waited till now to do this. But the other reasons, I have had a free account in the past, um, but the free account, if I go down to the um, pricing section here, it doesn't give me a lot. Like it gives me 15 downloads per month, which is probably enough for most people. But what it doesn't give me is what I actually want, which is over here in the gold section, the um, author mockups, uh, which is what we're gonna be looking at primarily today. About here, this down here. Um, now, just a quick point in reference, you'll notice that there's uh, two versions here. There's a platinum version. Platinum version just gives you extra mock-ups. So we'll take a look at those two. Um, but anyway, it all makes sense, but I just want to get in and give you an overview of what this is. The other thing I want to do is, before I get too far, is I'm going to talk a little bit about another uh, competitor called Mock-Up Shots. It's actually part of a bigger ecosystem that I'm not going to be covering today. Uh, but mock-up shots does uh, something very similar to book brush when it comes to the mock-ups themselves so i was going to show you guys a little bit of that but the difference is is also in the pricing and also what you can do with it so those are the two things i want to show you guys today so do stick around um i don't know how long this video will be um but i do hope that you will get a lot out of it when i do cover it so let's take a quick look over at my uh, book uh, brush dashboard here and take a quick look what i've done with it uh, and that is not what I wanted to show you. So this is the book brush dashboard here. You got home, account, brand kit, all this stuff. So um, most of this you can actually explore on your own just by signing up for a free account. One of the nice things about book brush is the free accounts are really generous. Like you can do most of this stuff for free. Um, just with, again, with the download limitations. The one thing you can't do is use the mock-up um, creator. So I want to actually go straight to the mock-ups real quick and then we'll come back to all this here. Um, when you do the mock-ups, uh, it'll let me choose it. Again, apologize, usual, uh, internet response slowly whenever I do videos. It works fine when I'm not doing videos, but as soon as I want to do a recording, it likes to take its sweet old time. Um, when you go into the mock-ups here, what the mock-ups do is you actually get to upload the, your book photo, um, however you see I got a few of these. I got a few old ones, and then I got uh, Paperweight, which I'm still working on. Uh, forgive me guys for taking so long to finish it. Um, I've actually been focusing on Hybrid City for now. It's going to take so long. But you'll notice over here in the step three that it's got uh, a bunch of different options here for plugging in your covers. Why is this? Because when you have the mock-ups, what they'll do is they'll fill in the screens, like the white spaces, with your cover. So for example, let's say if I wanted this cover here or if I wanted this cover here, actually I like this one here. What it does is, is when it takes your book, let's say if I pick this cover and then I convert, it's gonna actually move my book cover into that space. So once you, um, once it generates, um, depending on the internet speed, and again, it could take a while. Uh, it could be quick, nope, there it goes. Um, then what you'll do is you'll go to download your image and then you can see what it looks like and you'll see that it went up into my little area up here. So if I click on it and open it, we'll take a quick look at what this looks like. Hopefully it'll open. Um, while we're waiting for it to open, we'll go ahead and close. Um, we'll look at some of these other images here. 
Um, most of these are free images off of like Pixabay or you know, Pexels, any of those, Upsplash. Um, but what they do is, again, you can see they have different options for tablets, phones, hardcovers, soft covers, and you can, if you look over in the right here, you can actually see that they have different themes, and they've got, of course got the newest themes. So let's say if you're doing an urban fantasy uh, set, then you just go to the urban fantasy designs. And so it'll look for the one that best matches your type of book. So that's one thing I like about, okay, my picture's done. Let's just take a quick look. Hopefully you guys can see it. So there it is. So they, it took my image and it put it in right into the tablet. So one thing I like about doing this is you can use that in your marketing. Um, I actually have it on my uh, web pages. Um, so like if I go over to my site real quick, um, let's see, if you scroll down, like you can see an example of when I used a mock-up for my books. Uh, a lot of people will use their standard uh, image, and I mean, I probably should have done that. I do have other pages where I do that, but I just I find it's interesting to actually get the reader's attention more by making it look like it's being used in real time. So same thing here. Um, now I did not use BookBrush to do these tools. I actually used the other tool I'm going to look at in a minute called um, um, Mockup Shops to do these. The point being is that that's one of the advantages of having mock-up ability is you can uh, create these fake scenes and still make it look like your book is you know in use and you know psychologically that's just a good thing to have so um the other thing i want to show you guys too i'm not going to necessarily go through all of these is you can technically view these uh even on the free plan you just can't convert them that's the main draw but i do want to show you that um if you go to uh i think it's platinum if you click on the platinum here actually let's to, let's unselect all and select all. All right, well, I'll just do this. Okay, if I just leave platinum open, you can see what um, the the diamond tier gives you, or the platinum tier gives you. These are the ones that you have to pay the extra money for if you want to use them. So do be aware, and, and if you're not sure, you can always look at the lock here uh, to show you why you can't download it. Um, but you'll see that they're a little more sophisticated now. At some point, I want to go through a video and show you guys how you really don't need to do this. Um, if you're on a budget, now if you have all the money in the world, I would say just get the top tier because I mean it's worth it. Because then you get videos also. Not that I love videos that they do on um, on BookBrush, but you you have that option. But if you um, if you have Photoshop or even a program called Affinity Photo, which I have, there's a way you can do these without having to uh, subscribe to an advanced membership, um, which I'll, I'm not going to show you today. But I, I do uh, would like to show you guys at some point in the near future um, an example that I use. But you can see that there's some pretty good images here if you do decide to go to the top tier. Um, whereas you know, if you don't use the platinum, then you got a, a you know a lot more basic choices, and a lot of them um, kind of seem more sandwiched on than anything. Right, this is what I was trying to do before, where you can just see everything. Um, So yeah, you, but like I said, you have a lot of options here, um, and it's not the only thing you do on BookBrush. Obviously, you can if you went back and look at some of my uh, designs here. You'll see that you can also just create your own. Uh, but one thing that's nice about BookBrush is, let's say you see the custom creator. To use it, it's pretty simple. If you go to the, into the custom creator, uh, it's going to give you the option to uh, select from these different tools. And um, again, you can do this on the free side. You just you pick whatever your your format is. So, like, let's say if you're doing a Facebook ad, click that. It'll give you a basic overview of the um, image here or the, the size. And then you can go into a template if you want um, using your own, or you can go into um, let's see, there's some community templates over here that if you'd rather use one of theirs, uh, make your life a little easier. You can do that. Uh, or you can start your own by starting with your own background. And of course you can upload your own image or use one from the public domain. Um, so if you're doing something for the fall, now that we're in September, um, certainly you can pick something in the fall and click on that and then you can take your book. Now you may have noticed that I had a couple books already in here. Let's say if I want to use, let's say this flat cover here, 
a paperweight. I'll just generate paperweight on there. We'll give it a second to convert. And then once it's in there, um, you just move it wherever you want. And then of course you can use text Add in the text box. And uh, usually you'll do your text over here. Read a great book for um, October out soon. Okay, and then of course you can edit the style. If you don't like how that looks, you can change the font. So I like to do Allegra for some of my stuff. For paperweight, you probably want to use something more office looking. So um, something like Basterville would probably be pretty good here. And then um, you can certainly, if you want to add a shadow, you can do that. Change the size, make it like 42 is pretty good. And then if you want to maybe lighten it a little bit. Um, if you want to do, I'll start this transparency. If you want to lighten the text a bit to kind of blend with the background, of course you can move it. And then if you want to stretch it out. Do all that. So it's a pretty standard editor, very similar to Canva or anything like that. But the appeal, of course, is you get the uh, mock-up books that you get to tack on. And again, this is all part of the free plan. Uh, you, it's, you just have up to fifteen dollars a month. So if you need more than fifteen, you should probably pay for it. But if you leave fifteen or less, then you're, you don't really need to buy this system. Um, now, what's also nice too is when you go into images, you can get your stamps. So let's say if you want to uh, sell it on Kobo. Whoops, sorry, you just click it. I keep forgetting, you just click. I'm, I'm always used to wanting to drag. And of course the message here knows that I want to drag it. You can stamp it, you can put it on Amazon, click, and, then, and so on. Um, I think if you need to ever update the um, image that you're on, you can change it up here. So there's always ways you can fix this, um, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward. And then there's other reasons why you might um, choose to use this. If you're doing um, one thing I learned at Inkers Con is if you use Bookbrush for A plus content, it makes it easier to do like the threefold tab. Um, if you go back to add size, um, I think it's custom or other. Yeah, if you go to other here, you'll see some of the other options. Um, there is something for... Maybe it's in the so, uh, I actually don't remember anymore where it is, but there's a place for doing A plus content if you want to. Also, those of you who uh, use Atticus, um, you'll know that I'm a big fan of Atticus. There's a way you can do Atticus ornament breaks on here, uh, and it integrates directly in from the brush. So there's some examples. Uh, but here's some of the elements. If you want to add something extra, like some, you know, fancy text, and you want to Easter, um, to do see all. Um, yeah. So if you want to say back to school, you can do that. And of course, change the options here. More options. And again, we don't like the color. Let's make it something we can see. So we'll do this. Okay. And uh, yeah, and you just, you know, if you're creative, you can play around with it. Um, but that's essentially how the book brush system works. And then it automatically saves. So, like, um, or sorry, no, it doesn't automatically save. You have to save as project if you want to keep it. And if you want to download, you can go through ping, jpeg, or. Yeah, they recommend ping because ping has transparency and allows you to save all this uh, easily. Uh, if you decide that you don't want to keep it, you just leave page. But if you want to save it, um, then you'll you save as project. And then it'll actually save to your dashboard for you. And so if I go back to my main header, go back to the home, I can leave page now safely. And uh, give it a second. You'll see that it is now in my queue, along with my other stuff that I've been doing. So that's um, Book Brush. Now, 
you may have noticed that there's some limitations here. The one of the reasons why I want to show you guys the other program mock-up shots is because the um, you notice that this little box here, the little uh, book that I had, it's really only native to BookBrush. So if you ever want to use a, a mock-up like this, um, you can do that as long as you use it within the BookBrush ecosystem. But you may decide you don't want to do that. Um, so for example, let's say if you want to use like Crello or, or not Crello, um, Canva, or um, what I have is called Vistacrete, which used to be called Crello, which is why I said that. You'll notice that over here I've got um, a design here called, uh, it's based off of my, uh, read, my read my shorts book. What I did is I took my uh, photo for deposit photos and I actually did a mock-up within their, uh, their system here. Because the thing with uh, things like um, with Canva or Vista Create is you got a lot of different options, a lot of different templates. You may decide that you want to do something that's much more tailored to advertising, like you can see here. But you maybe you want to throw your book in there as an example of um, ways in which you can uh, kind of stretch your uh, your image or your uh, branding a little further than what um, BookBrush can allow you to do. So if you go back, like for example, if I go back to my home page here, or actually, I'm sorry, go to my project page, you're going to find that one of my early tests down here, I actually put in an image of my book in there. Vistacrete doesn't have copies of my book in here unless I add them. Well, how do I add them if I can't get them directly from BookBrush? Well, that's where um, this one here, Mockup Shots, comes in handy. If I do, let's say, if I click on um, Paperweight as my default, and I go into the all, or the, it's going to actually generate. What it's going to do is it's going to actually populate all these mockups with that book. And it's a lot of the same uh, type of images that you'll get off of BookBrush. Not everything. BookBrush definitely has more choices. And then Mockup Shots, I think, has a few different choices. But for the most part, you are going to be better off getting BookBrush. But one of the reasons why um, this one's good to have is if you keep loading, um, you're going to find that you're eventually going to get into some Im or some um, icon-like images. Okay, okay, right here. You'll see that you've got... Uh, no, that's not it. Right here. Okay. Like right here, you have some plain images here, and that's not all of them. There's more down this way. If you wanted to download a ping of one of these solo images and take them into your design program, like for me, I have Affinity Photo. Um, what you can do is you can either A, import the ping as an asset into one of these other tools like this. So I think I have, um, I don't know. I don't know if I go down to book covers here. It might be a folder I set up that I never actually did anything with. Uh, I don't use this program very much, so I don't know that I'm going to find what I'm looking for here, honestly. But there's a way in which you can um, upload your content. Um, well, at any rate, you can, you can, whenever you do your design, you can import your image directly from your computer, and then you can use whatever image you want. So you can, you can add images to the images that are here including PNGs. So like if you create one of these mockups as a PNG and then import it into either your uh, like Canva like program or even your own designer like on um, Photoshop or um, Affinity Photo or whatever you're using, uh, you can have a lot more custom control and you can end up with something clever. So if we go to my website again, you'll notice that um, a while back, come on, Let's be a little more responsive, computer. If you look here, I had my mailing list with an old image of my read my shorts, just plain old image, and then of course a design that I did. And um, I think I did this in designer, and then I did a separate place for my um, my sign up. It works fine. Uh, I actually had a different uh, version of this um, on another. No, I'm not gonna look. I had one that's side by side, uh, just to kind of play around with it. I think it's over here. Yeah, here it is. Uh, just to try to see different things. But I wasn't really happy with any of them. I wanted something that really looks stand out. So what I did is I actually went into Vista Create, like you see here. Um, and I used this image and then I took the mock-up shot version over here. 
one of these and then I took went into my, my um, affinity photo and I attached it uh, to a downloaded version of the of one that I got from Vista Create and I put it all together and eventually what I did is I made I went to my uh, program called Beacon which is a it's a um, lead magnet program and I created this so so I did this instead and I think it looks cleaner um, and again, it uses a slightly different system than the other image, but you'll see that this all, uh, it just looks like a nicer landing page. Um, and you'll notice I have put the little icon here in the corner and that's based off of mock-up shots. So the reason why I want to show you guys, is just not that mock-up shots is better. Um, it's really not book brush is much better because book brush gives you a lot more options to use. It's much more designed and tailored for the author ecosystem. But book brush, you know, as expected, doesn't do everything. Um, and if you really want to have like unlimited control of your branding, I would say look at all these options. You know, look at mock-up shots. Look at um, getting something like Affinity Photo, which is I think only fifty or sixty bucks right now, um, to use as a way to kind of composite your designs. And of course, if you have Canva or well, again Vista Create or any of these um, these design programs even the free versions if you know as long as you're you don't need to do excessive downloading um you can do most of this stuff for free and just have um i think mock-up shots is the only one you do have to pay for out front um but the difference between book brush and mock-up shots is you know book brush is an annual fee uh which i showed you at the beginning with mock-up shots it's um it's one time and i think do i have it oh, it's over here actually um, it's one time fee. Now, the thing that's nice about them is they have discounts all the time. So if you get on their mailing list, usually around Christmas time, this will drop like 80%. So, um, or is it that much? I only paid $80 for it, but they just recently had a promotion. I think it was even cheaper than that. And they're also part of a bigger ecosystem. Um, if you get on their mailing list, you might have an option to get a lifetime to their full suite, which includes their own, uh, design program. Um, that's similar to Canva. And uh, it just, it's one of those things where it's, it's not better, but if you can get it once and never have to buy it again, that's, you know, I mean, it's useful, especially if it does uh, give you um, those stamps that you can put on other options. So the thing with, um, with mock-up shots is, you know how in Book Brush, like if you want video, you have to do the platinum with mock-ups. Um, you actually don't even have to do that. You can do a video builder. And so this comes with your your um, payment. And so if you want to do a video with your book in it, you can do that. Now, again, I don't think these are particularly awesome, but they are videos that are made for you. Um, if you want to save the trouble of having to create your own video. And But again, if you have a video importer, all you really got to do is, you know, get a stock video off of, uh, off of like Pixabay, one of those, or if you have a have your own um, account at, at Shutterstock or any of those, put a stamp over it, put some filters, and you can make your own. So you don't really need to use these th things, but if you're not inclined to do your own designs, um, you know, then you can certainly make your own. But if, just to kind of make a point here, if you click on one of these, um, it should show you once it goes through. Um, you'll see how it looks here. Um, okay, I was expecting to have to render it. Um, we're not going to watch that. Point being is there's animation, um, and you know it does show you. Um, oh, never mind. Here it goes. Hold on. Is it working? Okay. Yeah. All right. So you see my you see my book there, and you see the, the shots. And it's pretty short and sweet. You can use it on a promo. Um, but yeah, I mean, that comes with the, with the um, membership. Again, it's lifetime. Once you buy it, you don't have to pay for it again. So that's an example. But anyway, I hope that's a decent overview of um, things you can do in order to help your, um, your book promotions a bit. Uh, most of you who are serious about um, indie authoring probably already know about Book Brush, but you might not have known about mock-up shots. So that's why I wanted to point that out. And also, um, you may not have realized you can go beyond um, the limitations of Book Brush if you have a program like 
Canada or this to create or one of the other many um, competitors. Um, so there's no reason to be hamstrung by uh, your tools. You can just, you know, if you have other tools, you can be a lot more versatile. So um, there's one other thing I want to show you guys, but not in this video, and that's going to be how to do your own mockups. Um, if you are just not happy with using the same old free pictures all over the internet, and you want to do something you paid for, but you want to make a mock-up out of that, that is possible. And I've done it, and um, I hope to show you guys in the next video, in a much shorter video. So, Anyway, that's it for today. Um, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, just leave a comment below, um, and I will have links to these places. I'm going to put a link to um, Book Brush and to Mock-up Shots in the description. The other is you can research on your own, because I don't know which kind of uh, systems you want to use. Um, but, um, yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, do all the things YouTubers tell you to do. Um, you'll notice that in the bottom of the description, I've changed my um, some of my links. I do have a smart page now that takes you to um, a lot of my um, my top articles, my uh, books that I recommend, and uh, just some um, other tools like, um, um, like Goodreads and, book, and um, BookBub and all of those. So do check that out if you get a chance. Um, it's a more central hub for all the things that I'm doing. And if you like this channel and want to support it, I recommend going there and, and helping me out by buying a book. Um, or at least, you know, going to my site, reading some articles, and just uh, maybe sign up for my newsletter. Uh, but again, newsletter is strictly for books, so if you're going in for tools, you're, you might not get what you want. So if that's what you're looking for, maybe just hang out on YouTube. But um, anyway, that's all for now. Um, I hope you all like this, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.